But there is no amount of therapy, there is no amount of counseling that can actually heal trauma. Only the word of God can go in and heal those things that need to be healed. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Josh. I'm a Christian filmmaker, social media content creator, and actor who loves God. Finally got that line down without stuttering. Um, so if you looked at the thumbnail, looked at the title, we're talking about a very uh, interesting topic. We're talking about childhood trauma, but from obviously a biblical Christian perspective. Now, a lot of Christians, as soon as uh, the conversation of mental health is brought up, um, people's eyebrows raise, you know, we get a little judgy, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think it's because a lot of times when, as Christians, when we start talking about mental health, we are afraid to be labeled as overly scientific or overly wise or relying on human resources more than relying on biblical resources, which is a huge problem. That is something that a lot of us tend to do where we rely on things like therapy, which is not bad, but it is bad if you rely on that more than the word of God. When when we rely on things like therapy and we rely on things like um, mental health research and we, we lean on science versus leaning on the word of God. That is a problem. But another problem uh, that we have is just completely ignoring trauma and completely ignoring mental health issues as if they don't exist. You know what I'm saying? Like ignoring those things, that doesn't help at all because, you know, we have an entire generation um, of believers, I believe, that are growing up dealing with all of these, this, this, these wounds, these childhood wounds, and they don't know how to properly give it to God. And they haven't talked about it. They haven't gone, you know, into the past and, 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 you know, dredged up those emotions and, and those things that, that need to be talked about. So I want to start off this episode by saying that there is no amount of therapy. There is no amount of counseling, even though those things are good if they are biblical. If you have biblical therapy, biblical counseling, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but there is no amount of therapy and counseling that can actually heal trauma. You know what I'm saying? Like only the word and the power of Jesus, only the word of God can go in and heal those things that need to be healed. You know, and I know there's a lot of conversations about people that are not even believers that seem to find that healing and seem to heal, you know, through childhood trauma. But what good is doing that if you're not relying on God? You know what I'm saying? To, to trust in man is a sin, guys. I feel like we tend to just ignore that and sweep that under the carpet like it doesn't exist. You know, Jeremiah 17 says, cursed is the man. Cursed is the one that trusts in man who puts his confidence in flesh, who puts his confidence in human ability, who relies on self. Like that is a sin. That's a sin just like any other sin. Um, and, you know, it's important to understand that. But, you know, it's it's only the word of God can heal it. And God can heal your childhood trauma. God can heal those things that you have been through and make you whole again. Um, I mean, this is true. I mean, this is a famous passage. I'm sure we know this. First Peter 5, 7, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he careth for you very deeply. So, I mean, that's pretty set in stone right there. What that's literally is saying is just Throw your problems on to God. Give your situations, give your burdens, give your doubts, give your worries, give all of that over to the Lord, you know? And I, I, I think that, I mean, there's more scriptures to support it too. Matthew 11, come to me all you who are burdened, who are weary, you know, I'll give you rest. My burden is easy and my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds there wounds. So the this is obviously kind of like the solution to trauma. What this is literally saying is he will heal you. God himself, the power of the Holy Spirit will heal you. This is a promise, you know, from the word of God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. These are not just sayings, these are promises. You know, now I know what some of you may be saying is like, well, I mean, 
Yeah, but this is not really talking about childhood trauma. Like, is there any Bible verses that talks about specifically recovering from childhood trauma? And to be honest, from studying scripture, I have not found any any Bible verse specifically addressing childhood trauma by name. There, there isn't any in the Bible. Um, but we know it's real. We know that there are things in our life and there are things that we experience specifically in our childhood that can shape and form us into the people that we are today. And this kind of goes into the, you know, scary word here, the science kind of of childhood trauma. Um, I've researched into this and it makes sense. Um, and, you know, I don't want you to I don't want you guys to think the science Science only backs the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Um, and people always try to use science to refute the Bible. And they can't because God created science. God created our minds. God created our hearts. God created our bodies. These things are real. You know what I'm saying? And even though the Bible does not address specifically the, the science of childhood trauma and the things we go through, there's biblical ways to heal from it. And we're going to dive more into that. By the time you are seven years old, seven or 10 years old, um, a lot of your character is almost already developed. And what I mean by that is, the experiences that you experience when you're a kid, when you're in that seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 range, they tend to mold you into who you are. Now, I want to bring a balance. I'm not saying that's who you are going to stay. But what I'm saying is there are things, there's trauma that we can experience as young, as, 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 as people that are younger that can significantly impact the way we think as adults. You know what I'm saying? An example would just be me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I realize there are a few things about me. I am a big perfectionist. Um, I really don't have a lot of grace for myself. I really don't understand, like, well, it's not that I don't understand. I have a hard time accepting when I miss a mark. And I'm not saying just falling in a sin. I'm just saying little things, like little stuff. Like if I'm at the gym, because I love the gym and I'm working out and I don't, because I always try to do my sets until failure. If I don't push myself till absolute failure, then I feel like I didn't do any work at all. I feel like I totally just wasted all of my time. Um, and I will genuinely get angry about that. Like little things that don't go my way. If I feel like I didn't perform to a level that I should have, then um, I'm completely just beating myself up and I'm disappointed. And I thought that's just how I am, but I realized that stems from my childhood from when I was 10, uh, 11 years old, and I fell into a pornography addiction. Like, um, I always thought that righteous people don't sin, and sinful sinners actually sin. And I didn't understand grace. And I felt like my performance, my value was based in how righteously I lived. You know what I'm saying? And when I fell, I felt like all of that fell apart. And I went on this, this constant journey to perfect myself. And that's something I'm trying to unlearn, you feel me, um, in my life now. So, like, that's just one example. Like, there are experiences that we can go through in our childhood that is hard to unpack. You know what I'm saying? That's hard to to unwind. And there are, there are things that we probably do. We don't even realize why we do them, but we just do them instinctively. So it's hard to break. Um, now, again, I want to bring the balance. I'm not using science. I don't want us to rely on science. The main reason I explain that is because I want us to understand that, you know, you're not crazy for feeling these things. You know what I'm saying? You're not, it's not wrong to admit the fact that you have childhood trauma. You know, I feel like growing up in a Christian circle, again, like you are condemned if you bring up those things, you know, you're condemned. And it's, this part, this, this part I feel like is getting better, but you're condemned if you talk about mental health issues, depression, um, anxiety, uh, all of that stuff. Like the minute you start talking about that, it's like people give you the side eye or tell you that you need to pray more or tell you, tell you that you need to go on a fast or you got some demon in you, which is honestly not even graceful. It's very judgmental. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not true. Um, but you know, I'm not going to say that prayer doesn't work though. I'm not going to say that. And we're going to get more into that later, but it's like, you know, you're not crazy. There, there are bra See, our brains and our bodies and our minds, they work in ways that 
you know, sometimes the Bible doesn't necessarily describe, but we know it's true. You know what I'm saying? We know it's true. A perfect example, if you're in a relationship, you know, and you break up with someone, I don't care how many scriptures you quote. I don't care how many times you pray. If that's going to hurt, like the pain of a heartbreak or you've been through a divorce or you've lost a loved one, God forbid, like the pain of that is severe and you cannot avoid the pain. You will feel the pain and you have to go through the healing process. You know what I'm saying? It's very important to go through that healing process. So there are certain things and the Bible doesn't necessarily say, like, even though it's, this is obvious, we're human beings, like the Bible doesn't necessarily say, you know, and when you go through heartbreak, this, these are the signs of heartbreak. And when you lose a loved one, you will feel this. It doesn't necessarily define all of that, but we know it's true. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a problem. It's not, it's not in this thing with childhood trauma, you know, your brain, this is true. You know what I'm saying? Forget science. It's just how God created us. It's how God created our minds. It's how God created our emotions. You know, our emotions and our hearts and, and our feelings, you know, even though we're not to live by them, but they're just as intricate and complex as our physical bodies. You know, the brain has something like 300 billion, I'm totally screwed it up, but it's like literally billions of cells in our brains. You know, our emotions and our soul, our heart, it's even, it's even more complex. You know what I'm saying? Like I can see a picture and get a different feeling than you seeing the same picture and getting a totally different feeling because of experience, because of, 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 of past experience and emotions and trauma. You know what I'm saying? So like these things, I'm not straying away from the scripture. Y'all should know me by now. Um, but what I am saying is that these things are real and it's okay to acknowledge them. To ignore them is just to ignore that you're human. You know, it's kind of stupid and ignorant and it doesn't get you anywhere, you know? Um, so it's understanding that those things are real, you know what I'm saying? And it's okay to feel them. You're going to hurt, you know, um, you're going to have, there is childhood trauma that you probably have to heal from. And now we're going to talk about how do we fix this? How do we get to a place where we are healed? And I'm going to say an answer a lot of you don't know. I mean, a lot of you may not like, but God is the only way. You know, God is the only way. God is the ultimate healer and he will heal you. He will heal those things that are broken in your life. I am speaking as a witness. There's things that God is doing in my heart that he is healing me from. You know, there are things I thought I would never get over that God has 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 has, has um, set me free from and healed my heart. You know, now I, I, want, I keep saying this. I want to say there's nothing wrong Personally, I would not go to a secular therapist. That's just me. I personally would not do that just because, you know, your soul and your mind is much more valuable than your body. And a lot of times, sometimes therapists, you know, I'm not saying all of them, but like when you rely on secular methods and that's your source, like your source is secular methods. I mean, that's just a really good way for the enemy to seep in and have you doubt the word because the minute think about this i'm not saying this is all therapists i'm just saying this this has happened you know and it can happen you trust your therapist let's say you trust your therapist and you're you're relying on your therapist more than god you they tell you things that are true they tell you the science of childhood trauma they tell you the science of the brain they tell you all of these things right but the minute they tell you something that's against scripture your natural inclination is going to be to believe them. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a perfect example. Um, this may be a little weird, maybe uncomfortable, but people say this all the time and I'm going to address it. There's a lot of science. There's science. And there are people, doctors that say that masturbation and pornography is healthy for the human body. There are scientific articles that say that as men, we should regularly, you know, release and, 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 and things of that nature and watch porn because it's good. And I don't care what science they back up. I don't care like what articles they do and all of that stuff. It's not right. And it will destroy your soul. The Bible says so. So that's the thing. It's okay to look at, 
at our bodies and our minds from the perspective of that's just how we are. But it's dangerous to trust in that and to trust in science because the minute that scientists, because they're twisting it, they're, they're using science to twist the word, the minute that they say, tell you something that's unbiblical, you'll tend to believe it because they built a trust with you and you've trusted them more than you've trusted God. So I said all that to say, we should never be trusting our therapists. We should never be trusting our, we should never be trusting anybody, to be honest, to heal our wounds. God should be our ultimate source. I'm not saying it's wrong to go to those things. It's, just, it's very, be very careful not to rely on it because they can't heal those things in your heart that need to be healed. You feel me? There are things that I have been through that I cannot talk to anybody about. Not because no one's there to help me. I have incredible friends, incredible family members. I have people I could call in a minute and talk to them about all of my stuff. You know what I'm saying? I've been to therapy sessions. I have, you know, had all of this wisdom around me. I'm very blessed. But the reason I can't talk to them about it is because they wouldn't understand. Not that they can't, not, not that they don't want to, but it's something so deep in my soul. It, there's pain so deep that I can't know. It's hard to put. I don't even understand it. There are certain things you're going to go through. No one is going to be able to help you. There are certain things that you're going to go through. No one will be able to understand because only God can heal it. Only God can heal it. Only him. And so I said all that to say that if you think you can just science and therapy your way out of your trauma, you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're wrong. It, 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 it does not work like that. God will never give you something and that will help cause you to trust that thing more than him. Because you remember, unbelief and trusting in something else is a terrible sin. If we look at King Esau in 2 Chronicles, King Esau was counted unworthy and sinful because he went to the doctors to heal his feet instead of trusting God. Look at how deep that is. Like most of us is, have no problem running to the doctors. I'm, I'm not speaking against doctors. I'm not getting into that. But what I'm saying is God takes very seriously when we trust in things other than him. And that's the thing. The ironic part is when we trust, in, those things don't even help us. They give us temporary relief. I'm being real. Like the whole, th this whole thing with like mental health, like a lot of these secular outlets, they give you bandages on gashing wounds. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's addressing symptoms. It's not addressing the root. Sometimes you don't even know the root. Sometimes you can't even formulate words. God is the only way, the only true way to get healing from this thing. I'll tell you this. After all the things, I am healing from my childhood trauma and God is doing a work inside of me. He is rooting things out and tearing things apart that need to be torn apart. And I, it's all I've been doing is just been seeking him. And I've just been letting him minister to me and letting him break those things inside of me and letting him heal me. You know, um, again, it's okay to talk. It's okay to have a biblical counselor, biblical therapy. That's 100%. It's good to talk to friends. I'm just saying we can't rely on those things just like anything else. Now we're going to get into like, how do you cast those things on the Lord? We know 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast your cares on the Lord. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come to me all you who are weary and burdened. You know, Psalm 147, 3, he heals the brokenhearted. But how do you do that? How do you come to God? How do you give these things over to God? And this is just me. What I'm about to say um, I don't necessarily have a scripture to support it, but I do believe it's true. Um, and this is just me. This is how I cast my cares onto God. But I don't think casting your cares on the Lord is just saying, God, I give you this situation and I refuse to think about it anymore and I'm done and that's it. And you bury it in the back of your mind and you refuse to think about it. If that works for you, hallelujah, amen. Keep doing it, keep doing it. But for some of us, that may not be enough. You know what I'm saying? For some of us, it may be a thing. My mom calls it a trash master effect where you just fill your your trash can. You have all of these stuff, this trash, this trauma, this uh, burdens, these family issues, all of these things until it overflows and explodes. You know what I'm saying? 
So for some of us, that may not be efficient because we're still not dealing with the issues. We're just sweeping it aside until we have to deal with it later or until it comes up later. I think casting your cares on the Lord is, you know, not just saying, God, I give you this. I think it's talking God, talking to God and letting out those emotions, all of those ugly, dark emotions and giving them to him and literally talking to God as if he is our therapist because he is, he's the ultimate healer. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's sinful thoughts, even if what you're thinking is wrong, talk to him about it. Submit those things over to him. If you're having sinful thoughts, or you, even if you're mad at God, some of us are very mad at God. It's not like he doesn't know. He knows your thoughts before you can formulate them. He knows what you're going to say before you say them. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. Like, God is not this... Um, this, this, just this being that is up in the sky. He, he lives inside of us as the Holy spirit. He's with us. He cares for us. He wants a relationship with us. So like, it's okay to talk to him. God, instead of saying, God, I give this to you. And I refuse to think about this. It's saying, God, I'm going to talk you through all of this, like a therapist, like you're my therapist. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you what works. God will heal you. God will dredge those things up. You know, he'll heal it. He won't just put freaking bandages on your symptoms. He will heal you, you know? And, and you know, what that looks like, I don't know. It's different for every person, but he does it, you know, and he's able. You know, these scriptures say it. He heals the brokenhearted. Cast your cares on the Lord. You know, it's so many scriptures about God healing you. He cares for those things that you care about. Even if you think they're small, even if you think he doesn't, it doesn't matter. He cares and he knows you. So I say that to say, be encouraged, be encouraged um, by the fact that he is there. Be encouraged by the fact that he cares. Be encouraged by the fact that you don't have to hide your trauma from him. You don't have to hide the things that you're feeling from him. You go to him you know, you don't follow your feelings, but when you go to God, God will direct you into what you need to do biblically. He'll never tell you to do something that's against the Bible. He will never tell you to do something that's against his word. I know I just feel led to pray for anybody that may be struggling with something that may be going through childhood trauma. I know sometimes on my story on Instagram, I'll, I'll um, put prayer requests. I'll be keeping you all in mind too. If either one of you that submitted prayer requests, this prayer is for you. Um, but if you feel led, join me in this prayer. Um, if not, send this to a video. Send this, I mean, send this video to someone that you believe could could help, could um, could use this. Father God, I come before you humble. I come before you weak. I come before you with no knowledge whatsoever of my own, but only your inspiration, God. I pray that anything in this episode that I said that was not of you, that you eliminate it, God, that you that you you pluck it out of their hearts, God, and that you correct me. Anything that was from you, God, let it sink in. And God, I want to pray for anyone that is dealing with trauma, that is dealing, that is burdened down by hurt, by grief, by heartbreak. God, you're the ultimate healer. God, just all I pray is that they come to you, God. Show them that you are a healer. Show them that you know their thoughts. Show them that you will not push them away no matter what they're going through. Show them, God, that nothing can separate them from the love of God. Show them, and like in Romans 8, God, how nothing separates them, God. How your love will never cast away those who are righteous, those who, who seek you, God. That we're not justified by our works. That no matter how many times we fall short, you love us anyway if we repent and run to you. God, God, just comfort their hearts, comfort their soul, healing to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I pray that prayer um, touched you. Um, remember, just run to him. Just go to Jesus. He'll heal all of that, but you just run to him and believe that he'll do it. But um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this episode. I really appreciate it. I hope this, this blessed you. Um, tune in next week. I, I try to put an episode out every week. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Joshua Wright G Guided. Follow me on TikTok, Josh Wright G Guided, and check out the website, gguidedproductions.com.
com. But thank you guys so much again for tuning in. Hug your family member, your wife, your kids, your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever it may be. Hug someone that's close in your life. Tell them that you appreciate them. And of course, much love.